Hi, Mom and Dad. Miss Kim here. Thank you so much for letting Miss Kalita and I come into your home today for Parent Taught. Today, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about finding a babysitter. Now, I'm not talking about finding a caregiver or a daycare. I'm talking about finding a teen babysitter. With schools closed now for the remainder of the year, you may find that there'll be more teen sitters around looking for jobs. That's a great opportunity for you to start looking now to find that special teen sitter who can come into your home and provide a little TLC to your kids, give you that much needed break, because after being home with the kids for such a long time, you're gonna to wanna to go out for a coffee or do something for yourself. Teen sitters can really be that extra set of hands when you need them in the house. So keep an eye on our Facebook page. We're gonna give you some tips and tricks on trying to find a good teen sitter. The first thing you need to do is start now. Start talking to your neighbors and your friends. Word of mouth is the best way to find a teen sitter. And once you've heard about that teen sitter that you wanna kind of bring into your house, then it'll be time for you to sit down and make a list of all the things that are important to you. How old are they? Do they have a babysitting course? Have they ever changed a diaper? Those types of things. And once you find that teen sitter, wow, it'll make life a little bit easier for you as a parent. So take a look at our Facebook page and take a look at the article. If you have any questions, give us a call or you can email me at gmfrcchildyouth at gmail.com. Okay, thanks so much. Bye for now. Hey, good morning boys and girls. Welcome to Parent Talk with Miss Kalina and I. Today we wanted to teach you a brand new song. In fact, this is the first time that Miss Kalita has ever heard the song. It's called Little Bunny Foo Foo. So I'm not sure how many of you know this song. If you come to Parent and Taught, you have probably sang this with me. So we're gonna teach Miss Kalita how to sing Little Bunny Foo Foo. <laughs> so hold up your bunny fingers, Miss Kalita. Okay. And this is our bunny hopping. Now remember, this is a mischievous bunny. It gets into a little <laughs> bit of trouble. So let's see what happens. Here we go. Little Bunny Foo Foo, hopping through the forest, scooping up the field mice and bonking them on the head. Down came the good fairy and she said, Little Bunny Foo Foo, I don't want to see you scooping up the field mice and bonking them on the head. I'll give you three chances, Bunny Foo Foo. And if you don't listen, I'll turn you into a goon. Miss Kalita, do you know what a goon is? No. A goon is a big squishy marshmallow we mess. Let's see if Bunny Foo Foo listens. Hold up your bunny. Little Bunny Foo Foo, hopping through the forest, scooping up the field by some bonking them on the head. Oh, the girl didn't listen. <laughs> Down came the good fairy and she said, Little Bunny Foo Foo, I don't want to see you scooping up the field by some bonking them on the head. I'll give you two more chances, Bunny Foo Foo. And if you don't listen, I'll turn you into a goon. Uh oh, let's see if Bunny listened. You ready? ready. Little Bunny Foo Foo, hopping through the forest, scooping up the field mice and bonking them on the head. Down came that good fairy and she said, Little Bunny Foo Foo, I don't want to see you scooping up the field mice and bonking them on the head. I'll give you one more chance, Bunny Foo Foo. And if you don't listen, I'll turn you into a goon. Let's see if you listened. Ready? Little Bunny Foo Foo, hopping through the forest, scooping up the field mice, bonking them on the head. Down came the good fairy and she said, Little Bunny Foo Foo, I don't want to see you scooping up the field mice and bonking them on the head. I gave you three chances, Bunny Foo Foo, and you didn't listen. So now I'm going to turn you into a goon. Here she goes. Bzz, poof. And just like that, Bunny Foo Foo has become a squishy, marshmallowy mess. Now, that won't last forever. Perhaps maybe the next day that he gets up again and he hops through the forest, maybe he will not hit the mice on the head. Maybe he'll just high five them or be kind. Because we should never hit our mice friends on the head. Miss Kalita, you wouldn't do that, would you? I would never. You would never. Okay. <laughs> Let's do another song. 
hollow boat, mm, wheels on the bus. It's getting sunny out, so there's different things that you might find on the bus. I'm going to add something to the wheels on the bus song today, and you see if you can pick out what the new thing on the bus is. Are you ready? One, two, three. The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and around, round and around. The wheels on the bus go round and round, all through the town. The wipers on the bus go swish, 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 swish. The wipers on the bus, they go swish, 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 all through the town. The horn on the bus goes beep, 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 beep. The horn on the bus goes beep, 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 all through the town. The doors on the bus go open and shut, open and shut, open and shut. The doors on the bus, they go open and shut, all through the town. The driver on the bus, it says, move on back, move on back, move on back. The driver on the bus, it says, move on back, all through the town. Well, the people on the bus, they go up and down, up and down, up and down. The people on the bus, they go up and down, all through the town. The seats on the bus go squish, 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 squish. The seats on the bus go squish, 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 all through the town. The flies on the bus go The flies on the bus go all through the town. The babies on the bus say, where, 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 where. The babies on the bus say, where, 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 all through the town. The parents on the bus say, shh, 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 The parents on the bus say, shh, 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 all through the town. Did you find what was different on the bus today? Are you sure? Was it the squishy seats? Was it the opening door? No. See if you can find what was different on our bus today. Want to get ready for a story? Let's do that now. Hey boys and girls, let's get ready for a story. Today I chose a story called It's Spring. And do you know why I chose that story? Because it's springtime. Now, how many people seen some snowflakes the other day? I did. I was kind of surprised. That does not mean it's winter again. That just means it's a little bit of snow. Winter's a little confused. But spring is here. So we're going to read a story about the types of things you can see when it's springtime. And after we read our story, I'd like you to go outside with your mom or your dad, whoever you're with, and see if you can find signs of springs too. Here we go. It's spring. In April, the robin began to sing to tell the rabbit it was spring. The rabbit hopped and thumped his feet to tell the deer the air smelled sweet. The little deer ran with the bunny. There they go. To tell the duck the sky was sunny. The duck swam off and gave a quack. To tell the cow, the cow, the leaves are back. Look at that, there's the cow is chewing away. There's the ducks and the butterfly. Let's see what happens next in our story. Our pages are sticking together. The cow let out a long moo. Mm, let's see what happens next. To tell the horse that the flowers grew. Lots of flowers growing there in that picture. The horse went trotting down the lane. Oh, to tell the rooster, watch for rain. Do you know what a rooster says? I think a rooster says cock-a-doodle-doo. The rooster gave a mighty crow, cock-a-doodle-doo. To tell the mouse, there's no more snow. 
There's the mouse, he's planting his garden. The mouse just made a tiny peep. There he is. To tell the birds to start to cheep. There's the birds, and look up there. There's some baby birds. You'll start seeing some baby birds in the trees soon. Then all the birds began to sing to tell the bears, wake up, it's spring. And look, there's all the animals that are, awo are woken up. There's the little tiny mouse with the radish, and there's some daffodil flowers, and two tiny bear cubs with their mama bear. I wonder what kind of things you'll see at home that are spring. Maybe some pussy willows, or some pee pee frogs. You might find them out in the water. You might even find some daffodils like in this story. Let's get ready to do another one. Hmm. Does anybody know this story? It's called When Sophie Gets Angry, Really, Really Angry. This is one of Miss Kim's favorite books. It's one of my favorites because it reminds us that we all feel things. Sometimes we feel happy, sometimes we feel sad, and sometimes we feel angry. And that's okay because you can't be happy all the time. And it is absolutely okay to feel angry, and it's absolutely okay to feel sad. When we feel sad and when we feel angry, that's when we need to tell our big person at home, our mom or our dad or our big brother or sister, what's making us so upset. Because it's okay to have those feelings. Let's see what Sophie finds out. When Sophie gets really, really angry. Sophie was busy playing when, my turn, her sister grabbed Gorilla. Oh my. No, said Sophie. Yes, said her mother. It is her turn now, Sophie. As her sister snatched Gorilla away, Sophie fell over the truck. Uh-oh. Oh, is Sophie ever angry now? Look at that angry face. Her eyes are, mm, and her mouth is scrunched up. Can you show me your angry face? That's a very good angry face. Let's see what happens next. She kicks, she screams, she wants to smash the world to smithereens. Oh dear, she is angry. She roars a red, red roar. Wow, look at that. Sophie is a volcano ready to explode. And when Sophie gets angry, really, really angry, bam, she runs. She runs and runs and runs until she can't run anymore. Then, for a little while, she cries. Now she sees the rocks, the trees and ferns. She hears a bird. Oh, she's not crying anymore. She's listening to things. She comes to the old beech tree. She climbs it. She feels the breeze blow her hair. She watches the water and the waves. The wide world comforts her. She's taking a minute just to kind of relax a little bit. She's looking all around. She sees the waves and a lighthouse. She's just taking a minute. Sophie feels better now. She climbs back down. And heads for home. There she goes all the way back to her house. The house is warm and smells good. Everyone is glad she's home. Hmm. Everything's back together again. There they are, sitting there together, putting a puzzle. And Sophie isn't angry anymore. Oh, do you know why she's not angry anymore? It's because when she got very angry or frustrated, she ran and she took some time for herself. Now, you shouldn't run away. 
Well, what you could do is you could go to a quiet place. So if you have a spot in your room where you can just sit quietly, or if you have a favorite pillow that you can hug, or you could just say to your mom or dad, I'm very angry, I'm very upset, and ask them if you could just have a minute to yourself, they probably will say okay, because you need to take a minute for yourself. You don't want to hit anybody if you're angry. You don't want to push anybody down like Sophie. So just remember that it's okay to feel angry. Just, it's not okay to hurt somebody when you're feeling angry. We've got lots of feelings inside. I know if I'm feeling a little angry or frustrated, I squeeze my hands really tight, and then I relax a little bit. Or sometimes I'll try my deep belly breathing, and you probably watch the video with Miss Kalila and I doing some deep belly breathing. Those types of things can calm us down. So, remember, it's okay to be angry sometimes. It's just how we act when we're angry, that's important. Okay, bye for now. Hi everybody, so uh, what we're gonna do this week for our craft is we're gonna make your own rocks that you can play tic-tac-toe with, with your siblings or your mom and dad. So uh, if you have a paved driveway, you can use chalk and you can draw a tic-tac-toe board in your driveway with chalk. Or if you don't, you could go in your backyard and just find a little spot that there's some dirt and you could draw a line with a stick in the grass or whatever you can find. Uh, if you don't want to go outside, you could get a piece of paper and just draw it on a piece of loose leaf and then use your little rocks. So what I did was just draw some simple designs on uh, some rocks that I just found in the yard. So you can paint whatever color you want, you can do whatever design you want. It is completely up to you. Have a great day. Bye. Hi girls and boys. Well, it's time for Miss Kim to go home and have my lunch. But before I do that, I wanted to say a special hi to my friend Reed and to Ella and to Evelyn and a big welcome to baby Oliver who has just arrived a few weeks ago and he soon will be coming to parent and talk with his mom and his brothers. So until then, have a great day. Wash your hands, stay safe and stay healthy. Bye for now.